Hey, Indianapolis, you are invited to an amazing event on March the 5th at the beautiful Cabaret Theater, where the women of Rise and Thrive Indianapolis will take the stage to stand tall in their story. Go to www.wethrive.live slash events and check it out. Can't wait to see you there. 43% of women don't come back to the workforce just due to, they don't on-ramp back on just due to um, the inability of flexibility for childcare. Hello, this is Rebecca Fleetwood Hessian, host of the Badass Women's Council podcast. And that was Jillian Walker. She is a woman on a mission, which is my favorite kind of woman. And we're here today to provide you with education about the child care challenges that exist for career women today. And we're going to talk about the data and the facts, especially here in Indianapolis, in our city, where Jillian is on a mission to provide the kind of care that our career women need. And so as a result of this episode... I'm asking for you, our listeners, to take action and educate further, educate our fathers, uncles, brothers, the men in our lives about this challenge so that we can come together and provide solutions that work for our families. This is a great one. Here we go. Hey, Jillian, how's it going? Good. How are you today? Super good. I'm so glad you're here. I'm excited to be here. I'm mostly excited because you and I both share this deep-seated, if we find something that needs to be fixed, we can't not just go after it. (laughs) Everyone needs a hill to die on. And it's a blessing and a curse, wouldn't you agree? sure. Yeah. 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 So what I love about the work that you're doing is you have found a real need that we have in the city of Indianapolis where we both live for working women and you are like a dog with a bone. You're not letting this thing go because it's a real need. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. What is, what is this, this gap that you're looking to fill? Yeah. So Where I focus are working women and working women with with children. And so the system that as it stands right now, and I'm going to talk specifically about childcare, is it's really black and white. So the way the system works now is, you know, get pregnant, pray to God you can find a childcare center that has an opening for an infant, um, you know, get in the system, um, really... it's really daunting and really scary and there's not enough and it's really expensive. Um, you know, and not all are really, you know, really quality or you have to find a nanny. So there's this system. Um, or, and you can go to a place that not everyone has the privilege of, of doing you stay home. And so, um, it's either full-time working out of the home mom or it's full-time working in the home, stay at home mom. And so there's kind of nothing in the middle. Um, And so what I've been working to do is kind of fill that gray space a bit. So there's a place where, um, you know, not necessarily staying home moms, though they are more than welcome and they are loved and they are supported, but those women that don't need full-time flex care, you know, the gig economy is big and there's a lot of aggressively remote workers specifically in Indianapolis. And they don't need full-time care. And so they don't have the option because it's full-time one way or full-time the other way. Um, And so they need to find something in the middle. And right now it doesn't exist. So I'm trying to build a space, um, going to build a space where women can work and be heads down um, remotely. So say in a co-working space that also provides child care on site. So where we can be on site, but not in site. Because I know if I take my five-year-old um, to a coffee shop to try to do a little bit of work, um, mom guilt is real. He's watching an iPad. I feel terrible. Um, or he's in my face. And I can't make a call with a five-year-old in my face. And it's hard to make a really important call from a coffee shop. For sure. Yeah. Unreliable yeah. Wi-Fi. It's loud. It's loud. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
I love this. And what some people may not appreciate or understand, and let's do a little bit of education because yeah. this is really an important part of the process. You need education, building, and money. Let me just say that up front. This is, <laughs> this, this is what we're going for. I want to help just, just wave the flag for you because it's so important. So education. Thank you. One of the things that people may not understand is you start thinking about daycare the night you decide to have sex to have a baby. <laughs> you, at least in Indy. I know it is different, you know, as the, the street numbers get higher into the burbs. But, you know, when you're in the city, um, the moment you think you're going to have a baby or Even you could accidentally burbs, have not, a baby. Yeah, it's not great in the burbs either, right? Yeah. In, in inner city in Indianapolis where you want and need and we all need this space where the buzz of everything great is happening, it's significant. And I, yeah. and I say that a little bit flippantly, but it's a fact. Yeah. I mean, the minute you decide that you want children, your next thought is, but what about daycare? Yeah. If you're a working woman, that is your literal next thought. For sure. Yeah. You, I mean, you have to, I mean, I hate the term it's, you know, it's kind of a marketing term, but you know, you spray and you pray and, and you get on every single list and, you know, some of those cost money. Um, and you, you just try to get anywhere and what that takes away, uh, you know, is your desire and need for quality. And so it's, uh, it's just a desire that you have, you have to find something, you know, you have to go back to work, you know, you have to do these things. Um, for me, I really wanted to breastfeed. That was really important to me. Um, and I needed my child within so many miles of my office. Yeah. And so, and yes, that is a, you know, I can say that as a privilege of convenience, but that was really important to me. And so I had five different lists. I think I'm still on one. My child is five. Um, and I, I mean, I just had to take what came and I got very lucky. I was very happy with, with where my son ended up. Um, you know, but that's a scary feeling. Mm -hmm. Well, let's paint a picture of who this woman is that needs what you were, what you were creating. So this could be a woman who has an idea for a business that she wants to start sure. as, as well as have a rich, rewarding family life. It could be a woman that is a remote worker for an organization that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's headquartered somewhere else. Anyone that's in childbearing age that wants to do meaningful work and have daycare available that allows her to do that remotely in some mm -hmm. fashion. Is that, yeah. is, did I capture it? Yeah, for sure. If you, I am not trying to build a space that will be a daycare. So if you need full time, you know, eight to five, every day, I highly recommend going a traditional route. Absolutely. Um, but not everyone needs that anymore. And that traditional route is really expensive. I mean, I remember um, when my son was born, I mean, that's $400 a week. Bananas, right. <laughs> which it has to be. Don't get me wrong. Ratios are low. It's four to one. You want to pay your teacher, you know, an actual living wage. I mean, there's a reason it's expensive and it probably should be more expensive. To be honest, a lot of those workers don't make that much money and they have your kids for eight hours a day. I, I get that it's, it's, it's a bigger issue. Um, but as the one paying it, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I didn't necessarily need it full time. So I could stay home or, um, you know, just work three to four hours a day where I needed calls and get my, you know, my head down and maybe take a client meeting. Um, but it, it would have been a lifesaver. And there are so many women at this child, you know, young child having babies age that have brilliant ideas. For sure. And they're, th and they're thinking to themselves, I really want to unleash this idea into the world or investigate it or go after it. Yeah. But I have to wait until later. I have to wait until my kids are older. I have to wait. Is that fair? Well, and some of it, but also think too, women for the most part, not me, I started late, but women for the most part, when they're having children are at their lowest earning potential, right? So they're, they're not making a hundred grand usually in their late twenties, early thirties. Those that are praise be to you. That's amazing. <laughs> but a lot of us weren't when we were having kids early. And so, um, it's again, come back, it comes back to that cost and that flexibility. So when you have a great idea, you know, and you're at your lowest potential for earning, 
right now in the workforce, um, and you're trying to pay full-time care, um, you know, you, all those dreams and ideas sometimes take a back seat. And let's take the, a look at the other woman that is the remote worker that's working mm -hmm. for an organization, because this is probably the, the, mm -hmm. the bigger audience for you, I'm guessing, at this mm -hmm. point. So now you've got a young, successful, talented woman yep. who has been hired by an organization, but probably is not quite at her, her highest pay grade yet. And she has the flexibility to work remotely, which we've all been asking for, and companies are now granting us that. Yep. But now childcare becomes the barrier. For sure. 100%. Right. Yeah. I mean, whether you get, and, and companies are, are doing so much better. I'm going to say so much better <laughs> about maternity leave and, and some of those benefits um, than they were before. They're still not great. I mean, there's great companies, especially in indie like Salesforce. They give phenomenal maternity leave. They're definitely on the cutting edge, at least in our city, um, for what is offered to women. But whether you're giving six weeks or 12 months, that's still a hard stop for a woman to go back. And so whether it's a phenomenal leave package or not, that doesn't actually mean flexibility. And so when I say, um, you know, remote workers or... Um, you know, women that are on ramping back in, um, that means for this conversation, women that can work from anywhere, but are full time working women. Mm -hmm. And so there, I mean, cause there's kind of a difference sometimes. So is it a part time? Is it a full time? This is a full time out of the home working woman that does not have to work in an office. And that was me, my entire career yeah. with Franklin Covey. I was a remote worker the entire 16 years that I was there. Yeah. And it was, my kids were there, uh, um, they were older. So you know, it was, it's, it's not the exact demographic that you're talking about, but man, is it hard. Yeah. And I would have loved to have had a space that I could have said, here, we're, all, we're gonna go, we're gonna go to, to mommy's office, mm -hmm. which is this, this space that you're creating. And, and you're gonna go off and do your thing as a young child, and I'm going to go over here and make five sales calls that are going to make us a lot of money next month. So go, go, go have fun, go play. I know you're going to be well cared for, and I'm going to go do some really meaningful work today at this. Exactly. Minute. I mean, think of that retention that employees can, employers could now have mm -hmm. if they're, they're already offering great options. They're already having, you know, remote workers, but then they, they're retaining, um, really quality workers that want to do really good work. And I mean, you and I have talked before, but women in the workforce are powerful. They're, you know, they want to share knowledge. They are team players. They have a hustle sometimes that they didn't have, you know, before they had children. And the return on investment of a woman in, leader in your organization is significant to the bottom line. Like there's so Truly. much research on it. It's ridiculous. Like it's fact, um, as well as, as you said, women are wired to want to share what they know. Mm -hmm. And so from an engagement and culture standpoint, they are in a great, great addition and investment to your organization. 100%. And yet you have a lot of facts that say that a large percentage of women are leaving the workforce because of the inconveniences that we're talking about, about childcare and some other things. Is that, yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. 43% of women don't come back to the workforce just due to they don't on ramp back on just due to um, the inability of flexibility for childcare. Oh my, forty three percent. Yeah, I mean our state, and and I'm gonna apologize if I get this off by a digit. Um, you know, a report came out last year that said Indianapolis. In, well, I'm gonna say Indiana. I think is the state. Um, we lose one point eight billion. Again, don't quote me, but it's about one point eight billion dollars. Um, a year in in work, work basically in, in dollars for the city due to um, you know basically people that have to take off work that have emergencies that um, you know have a sick child or um, don't have actual reliable care um, and so we're losing as a city as a state. Um, without the flexibility. So if we don't offer these really cool options um, and give some of that grace to our employees, which are 
nine times out of 10 women, um, we're just, we're losing, we're leaving money on the table. So not only does it have a business implication, which even if you're off by a digit, anything that's a 1. billion is significant, <laughs> right? So not only are we, we losing bottom line to our economy here in our yep. great city, we're also saying to women, yeah, this shit's hard. Like, and we're going to make it really hard on you. So we, I know you, I know you want a rich, rewarding career and I know you want to be a loving wife and mom, but you know what? We're going to make it really hard for you. So now you have to pick. Yeah. That's Again, crap. Yeah. Yeah. That's crap. It's just contributing to what I call the difference between striving and thriving. So striving, That's actually the word is strife, which means battle and conflict. And thriving means to grow, prosper, and flourish. Yes. And what we want as working career moms is to be honored for the fact that we want a rich, rewarding career. This isn't just because we need to pay the rent or pay the bills. Like we like to work and contribute and be valuable and relevant. That's, that's a beautiful thing. That's a part of who I am. And I also want to be the great mom that knows that she's got the flexibility to be a great mom and a great career woman. Oh, 100%. Why is that so freaking hard to understand? <laughs> but well, yeah, that could be a whole other conversation about who's in charge. Well, let's, okay. Education is where we're at now. We yeah. want education. We want a building. We want money. Yeah. So education, here's a real <laughs> issue that, that you've been faced with. And let me preface this by saying, I'm not political and I'm not, uh, I'm not a, uh, I am woman, hear me roar, which means I don't like men. This is not at all about yeah. what I'm about to educate with you to our audience on. These are real barriers that you've been faced with. And, and, and I'll preface this also by saying here in Indianapolis, the majority of our economic engine is driven by manufacturing, finance, very, very male dominant, dominated yes. industries. That's just a fact. I'm not yeah. like, I'm not being freaky about it. It just is. And so if we want to raise the economic diversity in our state, which is good for all of us, and it helps us weather yep. a lot of economic storms, we've got to start to look at what are some of the industries where women can grow, prosper, and flourish in a beautiful way. And we've got to be able to provide them these kinds of, of childcare options. Because one of the barriers that you're running up against is literally with the building that developers are largely men and don't understand the needs and have some paradigms or perspectives yep. that are making this really difficult to even get a building. So if somebody even said to you, okay, hey, I know with this building down the street, it looks like it's got the you know 8,000 square feet, exactly what you need. When you go talk to developers, they, you have barriers that you run up against. Fair? Fair. I mean, talk about those. Yeah. So one, I am not, I'm not a tech company. So I'm not, um, you know, Johnny off the street that can come in with uh, walls that are already built and outlets that are where they are and water is where it is um, that can come in and set up shop. So these are, these are also children. And so there are state rules. And so we have to have so many square feet. You have to have water at certain temperatures. You have to have so much plumbing in different places. Um, you know, there are actual rules to keep us safe and, and, and keep our children safe. And so um, that takes a lot of TI or tenant improvement, tearing down walls and rebuilding structures and putting in more plumbing. And um, there are a lot of places that, um, you know, that, that don't want to, because it's true. If I do fail, if, if we can't fill this with working parents and working women um, and I leave, they are stuck in theory with a building that is built strangely. Which, yeah, which doesn't allow somebody else just to walk in and bring their exactly. box of files and their computer and start running <laughs> exactly. that day, which is really yeah. what they want. And, yeah. and, and from a business perspective, I get it, but it For is sure. a huge barrier yeah. that you're running against. And also who <laughs> occupies the space has been a barrier, correct? <laughs> correct. Yeah. I, um, you know, there are, businesses and building owners and some developers um, that don't want to co-tenant with children, um, that don't see value, that see that as a liability, um, that just don't want to be, that don't want to share square footage with children, which is a shame. There are a lot of empty, fantastic buildings in our city um, that, to be honest, I think would 
fill faster if people had the option of childcare on site, um, you know, but that's not for everyone. And so my call to action to our listeners today <laughs> is to spread the word of education. Because I know many of us who are career women say that, you know, our fathers and our grandfathers were often our role models and our inspiration as career, um, who we, who we want to emulate because our mom stayed at home and that's great. We're not, no shade on that, but we, we look to our fathers and our grandfathers to Mm -hmm. say, you know what, he was an entrepreneur. He had this great career. and, And, and so now I'm, I'm asking our listeners to go to your father and your grandfather and your uncle and have this conversation educate them, not in a, you know, we're mad about it, but just in a, I don't think you understand the true challenges that we have. Because when you go to these people to educate, we open minds and eyes and hearts for a real problem that we have. And the more education that we have and the more conversations that are happening around our dinner tables, I think that's how we start to generate the change that we need that are going to remove the barriers, the real barriers that you're facing. I mean, it's great. I mean, I think, you know, women are speaking up more. I think that women are driving conversation more. I think there are, you know, obviously more women in the workforce, you know, some of my barrier is I do consistently talk to, um, who for the most part, you know, the wives have never worked outside the home, um, had, never been in a daycare before, had definitely never been in a co-working space before. And so um, when I say co-working with childcare, um, it is oftentimes met with a look of confusion or why would, why would I need that? And that's the, that's the trigger. You don't need that. It's, you know, I have lots of conversations with, with really brilliant people and business owners um, who, who like the idea but it's not about them. It's, you know, I have to finish a lot of conversations with, I'd really like to know what your wife thinks. Um, Cause they've never had to be in those spaces. Mm-hmm. And so think of that community. And I think that's what it comes down to. It's yes, it is a place where women can work. It is flexibility. It is cheaper care when you don't need full-time care. It is filling that gray space, but it's building a community of women. And so it's where you can walk in possibly having a bad day, get a great fresh cup of coffee or tea, you know, sit down, take a deep breath, have someone go, you've got this meeting, you're going to rock that call. And by the way, your hair looks great because we don't like men. We are communal creatures and we want to belong and we want to empower and we want to build that community. And I think that's something incredibly beautiful. And so while it's still the workplace and it's still doing the work, we're building this community of strong, amazing women and parents that need a support system that doesn't quite exist right now. And when I hear you say that, like I tear up, <laughs> like that's, that's the community building emotional connection that we as career women need and crave. And I didn't know how much I needed it until I went and built it. And when I built the actual Badass Women's Council of seven women, including me, where we meet once a month to to have those conversations, we just had a text stream going last night. Somebody launched a new course in our group and she sent it out. And the whole group was like, oh, girl, you didn't charge enough. Go back and fix that. Oh, this is amazing. I'm going to share it here. And it is the most beautiful, bottom line, business, badass group of women who when you say to them, I see you, I love you, I am you, our courage and our confidence to go do amazing work goes up 8,000%. Yeah. We learn from each other. We want to encourage each other. We want to support each other. Absolutely. And sometimes we don't know what we're doing if we're not in a space that encourages that. And so, um, and we want that space, but we also want quality care. And so we just want a space where we can, you know, I'm not, I'm definitely not of that, again, you know, thump on your chest and say, I can do everything. I'm amazing. Um, but I needle and I want to feel like I am, I have less guilt and, and more balance and whatever that balance means for you. Um, and so for me, it's, I want to do really great work and I want to be heads down and I want to focus and I want to connect with other women, but I also want to have less guilt about my kid going into childcare. And being on that other side of that wall. 
It's so true. So uh, my business, we thrive dot live, three things that, that we do ban burnout, build community and boost business. And one of the things that I know about business oriented women, because I am one, I like to make money, I like to serve my customers. One of the things I know is when we talk about self care and all of those, you know, things that are out there on the Instagrams, uh, there's not enough bath bombs and yoga and quiet time that makes up for either my sales gap or my kids don't have what they need. Yeah. Like none of that matters if I can't satisfy those two basic needs that I have as a, as a woman, like my business matters to me and my kids matter to me. So if you can solve those two issues, if I can go to your space and do meaningful work because I know my kids are being cared for and I'm not concerned about them, you have just boosted not only my confidence and my sense of value and relevance, but the economy benefits. Oh my gosh. It's right. Yeah. I just, I'm I'm speechless. I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) we got to have this. I, I dream of a day where I can go in, drop off my son, go to my, either, either my private office or to a communal space, be heads down, take a few client calls, maybe have a great client lunch, maybe take 20 minutes and go play with my kid. Oh my God, bring my whole stress level down, have some snuggles, breastfeed if that's where you're at and that's what you're into. And then I get to go right back 10 feet away and do more client calls. And, and close focus. a $50,000 deal and have the girl next to me go, high five, girl, you did right? it. Right? So you ah. literally have your stress down. You've gotten to be around your kid. You feel good. You're supported in a community and you're a badass. Oh my gosh. We changed the world. And you know what? Really? I like, I get so excited thinking about this. The fact that it's hard to accomplish also just pisses me off. <laughs> Because the barriers don't have to be barriers. So again, here's here's my call to action, listeners, all 10,000 of you out there. Take the information off Jillian's website, which is microchipindy.com. And I want you to share it on every social that you can share it. Share it on LinkedIn, share it on Facebook, share it on Instagram, share the information, Twitter, all of the, all of the places, all the things, all the socials. And then I want you to sit down with your dad, your grandfather, your uncle, your, your neighbor, who's your mentor, whoever those strong, powerful men are in this city that matter to you. And you have a really good relationship with, and I want you to sit down and I want you to say, Hey, I could use your help. We could use your help and make this personal. Because it's not enough just to share it on LinkedIn or, or, or Facebook. Because how often do we scroll past something important without taking action? This needs to be a personal conversation. It says, I need your help to educate so that I, your granddaughter, your, your niece, can have the opportunity to do good work and raise our, our, our grandkids and raise our family. Yeah. That's important. And that's something that we all can do. We absolutely all can do it. So the other two things you need, building. So typically, not typically, uh, ideally, about 8,000 square feet. Pie in the sky, yep. 8,000 square feet. Would love to be near a green space or city park. Um, In the heart of Indianapolis, where where work is happening. Yeah. We want to be, you know, 40th or less basically. Okay. And that's 40th is high. So around 38th street less is what we'd love to be. We'd love to be near the red line. I mean, we need to have parking. I understand that Indiana, we're a driving state. We're working on, we are, we're getting better at public transit. Um, but we're still pretty married to our cars, especially when we have kids, you know, we want to, you know, drive safe. And I understand that. Um, but also on the red line, because we want to lower as many barriers for women as possible. And so we want to make sure we have that flexibility as well. So city park would be great. Building playgrounds are expensive and red line and parking and about 8,000 square feet. And that would be a dream. Oh, I love it. We're going to make this dream come true. And the other thing that (laughs) that you need is money. I mean, and here's the thing. I, one of the practices that I teach in my coaching and consulting business is your mindset around money. 
So money is fuel for anything that we want to accomplish. Money is fuel for our family, for our church, for our school, for our nonprofit, our for-profit. There is no shame in our money game and you need money. And so what I'm also asking as our listeners and our great badass community is to think about where and who could be sponsors for this concept. Or even if you just say, you know what, I want to put some of my money to more research and more development and to help Jillian with this because it's important. Like money is is a key need that you have. And that's yep. no shame in that game. That's how we get, that's how we make <laughs> stuff happen. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I originally... Uh, started this process thinking as I think most people do, oh, I need venture. Oh, I need investment. Oh, I need all these things. Um, And it has been a hard lesson in uh, one, women get, I think it's 2% of venture um, per year. And two, I'm not, uh, I'm not building something have before. So people don't know how to invest in me. They don't, they don't understand the return. They don't understand, wait, it's a brick and mortar. Um, it's not fluid. It's not a SaaS company. Um, you know, it's a longer investment. And so for me, it, it's definitely selling, you know, not just good PR, but you're reinvesting into the community and into women. So that whole thought process has shifted. And, and again, surrounded by incredible women um, that have come before that have given the, have, have given the, um, basically given the idea that take that off the table, own your company, but you need sponsorship. If you really want companies, again, we lose $1.8 billion. If we really want companies to invest in their people, if they want to have retention, if we want to get past this maternal wall, if we want to, I don't care if you want to check your box that says, check, we have women in the, you know, in the workforce and some diversity. I don't care. Do you? but put your money where your mouth is. And so can we have those places, those companies um, that are already on the cutting edge or that, that want to offer better benefits? I mean, don't get me wrong. I come from tech and we have relatively good parking, but beer on tap and ping pong tables and all those things. I don't need any of those. I need care. A place where my child could go where I... So, you know, really investing in um, your people. And so where I'm going is I need companies to say, yeah, I want to do that. I want to invest. I want to put my name on the wall. I have so many spaces to offer to my maternity and paternity people. And, and I want to invest in you. And so I'm going for, um, I'm going for company sponsorships in our city. I love it. And I also know the difficulty of creating something that's not been done before. When I launched Rise and Thrive, this seven month experience for women, um, people said, well, nobody's ever done this. And they looked at me like with that face, like, oh, she's she's a little odd. Like, why wouldn't you just do something that's already been done? And that's not who we are. We, We find a need and we go fill it with how you solve the problem, not what's been done before. So I get the challenge of not only are you going and looking for sponsors and dollars, you have to sell the concept, which is why this education piece is so important and why we all need to band together and help you with this education because you are doing something different. And that's, you know what, Spanx wasn't a thing before Spanx was a thing, right? Reach it. Yeah. And so (laughs) just because it's new and different doesn't mean it doesn't deserve your dollars and your attention. This is, this is a need. This is a real need. It's disruptive. You know, people like to say those sexy terms of this is disruptive and, you know, this is going to change, you know, the way that we do things and behavior. And it is disruptive. It is, it's, it can be scary. And I wake up at four in the morning going, what the hell am I thinking? Daycares exist. It'll be fine. We've survived this long. And then you go to that place and go, okay, if this wasn't important enough, it wouldn't wake me up at four o'clock in the morning. Call me. I'm up. I'm thinking, <laughs> I, I got the same stuff on my mind. And, and it, we have to band together and our listeners have to join forces with us. And I really, I hope as a result of this podcast episode that the education in our fine city, I love Indianapolis. I absolutely want to pour into the women and the companies here. It's a huge part of my business model. If we can collectively educate each other and our families about the need that is real and exists and how you propose to solve it, I think we can do real a real service to our fellow badasses here in the city. Thank you so much. Yeah.
yeah, absolutely. I, I love working with you because you get me fired up. <laughs> I mean, when you and I get together, it's like, I yeah, know. yeah. And then we'll do this. And yeah. So <laughs> girl, we need I each other. It. We need each other. Okay. Keep, keep doing the, the good work, the hard work. Um, I know that you do it with passion. And so I'm asking again, call to action of this episode is go to microchipindy.com gather more of the research and the education and the information that you've so diligently went and, and found for all of us and then sit down with someone in your family and, and share that this is a need and let's band together and get you some solutions. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. All right. And I'm not coming down. Isn't she amazing? I just literally want to start a rally in the streets to to support her, which we don't have to take the streets. We can pick up the phone. We can send a text. We can have conversations and we can rally support for this. So as you heard, education is the best thing that we can do around this topic. But also, if you're in Indianapolis and you have a building and or dollars that you want to put towards this great cause, um, please, please do so. Go to microchipindy.com to download more information that you can share and to follow along Jillian and her journey to make this happen. Thanks so much for being here. Make it a great day. I'm not coming down. I never liked it on the ground. I'm not coming down.